If you want to know what you're actually going to spend your time on working as a data scientist and if 40 hours a week of meetings is a reasonable amount, spoiler alert, it's not, but it does happen, then stick around. I'm going to tell you how much time I spend as a data scientist on five different categories of tasks. It's based on my own research of my own time and also on the research of my colleagues. So thank you colleagues for that. And I will also try to break it down as a percentage and show it on a pie chart. I know data scientists tend to hate on pie charts and there are good reasons not to like them unless it's a real pie like here. So stick around if you want to watch me to try to go for the whole video on one very questionable pun and a lot of very questionable metaphors. And if you want to know how to make a blueberry pie and what do you spend your time on working as a data scientist. Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I wanted to touch upon a topic that I don't think is touched upon often enough and that is what you spend your time on working as a data scientist. I know in a lot of universities when you study data science program or when you study computer science with the incline towards doing analytics or in the courses like Coursera and Udemy when you take a data scientist specializations you mostly work on doing analytics statistics, exploratory analysis, maybe experimentation, maybe testing, building some models and machine learning and so on. But that is definitely not the core part of your work when you're starting working in the company. So I think this part might actually inspire you to pivot a little bit what you study towards the tasks that I will talk about now or pivot a little bit what you're working on if you're not working as a data scientist but do want to work as a data scientist in the future. So there are five main categories of tasks or categories of activities, let's say, that you do when you work as a data scientist. And like an ingredients for a blueberry crumble pie that I'm going to make for this, they should be in a good balance to make the whole pie of your data science career flourish and work and taste very well. First and foremost is there is no pie without flour, there is no data science without extracting and manipulating data. Here I'm talking about the time you spend on actually going into the databases that you have in a company. It might be cloud storages like AWS or Google Cloud, it might be some local storages that you might have in your company looking at the data, researching what you have, what kind of tables, what kind of metrics you can extract from them, what kind of dimensions you have, is the data trustworthy, pretty much just writing a lot of SQL queries, trying to make sense of what you have to work with as a data scientist, what kind of questions you can answer with this data, what kind of data is lacking, so you need to ask developers or product managers to prioritize delivering this data and so on. This is the core part that takes the most time, especially in the companies that are just building their data infrastructure, creating the data sets, tracking the usage of their applications or products or whatever they're selling. And this is the part that you're actually going to spend most of your time on, especially in the beginning, because you really need to take those hours and understand what you have to work with to be able to deliver value and results in the future. So I've been doing analysis on my own calendar and counting how many hours per week approximately I spend on various types of tasks and for the data manipulation and writing queries to answer various questions, whether it's a project that I'm working on or an ad hoc question from a stakeholder, for example, like what is the number for the usage of this application and so on. I spend approximately half of my time a week writing SQL queries and doing data manipulations. It is definitely less time when it's a bit more advanced company with the more um, tools built, with more dashboards built, where the data is more accessible to the stakeholders to kind of get their insights from there compared to the company where the stakeholders or like managers have to go through someone to answer a question. So don't take it as a harsh number, it's very flexible. Take your time writing queries, sanity checking data in the future. When you build this base, you won't spend as much time on it and it will actually be much easier for you to answer questions very fast. The second category of different kind of activities that you do working as a data scientist is meetings. And in my pie analogy, that would be butter because uh, I guess you need to like have smooth relationship with stakeholders and butter is making it smooth. I don't know. Let's just go with it. There are three main types of meetings that you have to attend to. And the first one is your recurring meetings that can be stand-ups with your data science team or with the product development team that you're working with where like daily you meet with them and see what's the progress on the project. There can be uh, planning meetings with a data scientist where you decide what you're going to work on this week or this month. 
It can be retros where you look back and see how it all went and discuss what needs to be changed and improved and so on. And in a lot of companies, there are those recurring learning meetings within data science community where you sit down every week for like an hour and someone shares what they worked on, what they learned, what kind of tool they learned, what kind of method they use, what kind of value that brought. So you can kind of try to apply it to your own time at work. The amount of those meetings depends on how many projects you're involved in and the size of the company. The bigger the size of the company, the more meetings there are usually. So right now I don't spend a lot of time on those meetings. For me, it's approximately two hours a week. But when I work in a bigger company, this could easily extend to five, seven hours a week. Second type of meetings that you spend most of your time on is project meetings. So those are actually planning for the specific project meeting with stakeholders, discussing how you want to do an analysis, what kind of value they want from the analysis, meeting with them again to see the progress of whether they build something that you need to do analysis on, whether they can apply some of the learnings that you delivered to them. For me right now, it's approximately one hour a week syncing with my stakeholders on the progress of my projects, but it can easily go as well up to like five, seven, 10 hours a week, depending on how many projects I'm involved in and how many stakeholders want to know various very detailed parts of the project. And the third type of the meetings that you spend most of your time on is ad hoc meetings and those are actually the least favorite for me because it's something that you can't really plan. It's someone coming up to you with a question about like oh what's this number for this project or the product that we're working on or how do I get access to this data, how do I calculate certain things and this type of meetings is really flexible it really depends on the week. Some weeks are really heavy on those meetings and can go up to like maybe three, four hours of ad hoc meetings where someone asks you a question. Some weeks have almost no one asking you questions. For example, now in the summer, it's very quiet. And this also really depends on how much involvement you want to have in those meetings. So you can either just give them an answer or you can try to teach people how to um, get an answer for themselves, maybe teach them write a little bit of queries or show what kind of dashboards there are that can answer their questions and teach them how to use those dashboards. Of course, the second part requires a bit more investment of time right away, but it works better in the long term. Hopefully in the future, you won't have to answer the same question over and over again. So overall, I would say I spend on meetings right now approximately five, six hours a week. And for many data scientists, having too many meetings is actually a common point of complaint because they really kind of mess up with your brain and don't allow you to have this extended time that you can have for flow work, where you get in the flow, work on a specific project, do a lot of development work and kind of can keep your mindset in the same area. Meetings usually tend to break your day apart and involve a lot of context switching. Now the category number three and the main part of the pie is the filling of the pie. So in this case, that's berries, um, blueberry and raspberry. Without them, obviously also there is no pie. It just makes no sense Then it would be just dough. It's the core part of the data science work that you are taught in universities, in the courses on Coursera, Udemy and so on, the analytical part. So this is actually using the data that you've extracted to deliver value to the company by performing analysis on it. Here you would actually use most of the data science skills that you learn in university. You will use Python, R to do data manipulation and visualization. You will use your knowledge of statistics, exploratory analytics, uh, your maybe potentially knowledge of machine learning. And this is a part where I also include a very important type of tasks, which is writing up your reports and doing presentations that you share with stakeholders where you present your learnings and try to help them integrate those learnings into the products that they're building. You would expect that this is the part you spend most of your time on, but I'm afraid it's really not the case. In many companies, you would spend five to 10 hours a week on actually doing this kind of analytical work that is core data science work. But if your company is a little bit more advanced and there's already some core analytics done and core basic most important questions answered, then you will get more time to spend on doing like actual analytics. Ingredient number four is having good tech and tools that support you uh, in providing value as a data scientist in the company. 
and in the case of my pie that would be sugar and starch that kind of adds the flavor and keeps the berries all together without being very soggy and not pleasant to eat when i'm saying tech and tools it can be various things from you actually spending time doing software development and building tools that are allowed to do automated a b test analysis or create automated dashboards this part also involves building ETL, so extract, transform, load, daily batching processes when you need to kind of get raw data into the presentable form that is easy and convenient to use. So this is more like a core work that makes your life much easier. A lot of data scientists don't actually do that, especially in the companies which have specific teams that are dedicated to this type of work. But right now in my company, I work a lot with this, building data sets that are easy and convenient to use, building dashboards for the stakeholders that answer most of their questions and kind of let us breathe and work more on a deep dive analytics and building tools that allow for those things to happen. So for example, building scheduling tools is very important and a very common thing to do or setting up a server that runs dashboards somewhere in the cloud that everyone can have access to, which is also a really important part. So I would say that really depends on the size of your team and if you're interested in doing this kind of work. So this is also a very flexible part where you might spend from zero to like 10 hours a week, which is what I spend on right now. And the part number four, which adds this little crunchiness and tastiness to the crumble of the blueberry crumble pie is oatmeal. And in this case, I would translate it to working on improving yourself, adding this extra flavor, extra nice crunchiness. Oh God, this is a very, very, very questionable analogy, but uh, let's go with it, whatever. So this part is doing your learning and improving your data science skills. It's a very, very, very important part, especially if you wanna progress as a data scientist in the more technical side, if you wanna become a senior or principal data scientist, there you have to invest a lot of your time doing various courses, learning new tools, learning new libraries, learning new methods, reading papers, reading books, and so on. I would say this is the hardest one to ever fit in your busy schedule as a data scientist. I tend to really not spend enough time on that and I know that a lot of other data scientists that I work with are really lacking this part. In a lot of companies I know you might actually get this allowance of spending like half of your afternoon or an afternoon on Friday to like work on your skills, do some Coursera courses or read some books but I've never really seen this actually working for a long term. People tend to like try to do that for a couple of weeks and then they fall into the habit of actually just having meetings, doing their core work because that's in the end what's the most important and otherwise you'll have to like try to catch up on this work. I think that's the part that's most often overlooked when you're deciding to work as a data scientist that really often you don't have enough time at work to study certain skills or certain material to actually progress in your career so that requires a lot of discipline and a lot of extra engagement and extra passion for data science to be able to learn on your own time the best thing that you can hope for is have a project that will require you to learn something new a new skill a new tool a new method um, but that doesn't always happen and it's also really often on you to find this kind of project where you can apply some new knowledge that you might want to learn. So let's see how my data science blueberry crumble pie turned out and what did I spend most of my time on?
how much time I spend for different types of tasks. We are gonna try to cut this up and uh, summarize what do I spend my time on. So I spend majority of my time, approximately 50% of my time or 20 hours a week-ish on data manipulation and data discovery part where I use SQL to dig down into the databases we have, to find out answers to questions of various stakeholders, to make sanity check on data and make sure that the data we have can be trusted. I spend the other 25% of my time or 10 hours a week on building sort of tech and tools and ETL on the data that I just discovered. Uh, so building dashboards, building data sets that can be used in the future and kind of building the foundation for the future data science and analytics work we can do in the company. I spend approximately 12% of my time or like five hours in meetings. That's much less than it usually is because it's summer and a lot of people are on vacation. Then I spend another five hours a week-ish on doing analytics, presenting reports presenting um, presentations to the stakeholders and kind of digging a bit deeper into the data. And I also spend almost none of my time on learnings, which is a shame, but it's not to say that I don't learn during work. Of course, I learn a lot by doing. Here, I mean, I just don't spend deliberately time on learning something new that's not really applicable to the things that I'm working on right away. Thank you for watching. If you are a data scientist, let me know in the comments if you have a similar distribution of time that you spend for different tasks or if it's very different. I'll be very curious to see that. And if you're not yet a data scientist and you're studying to be one, please let me know what was the most unexpected and interesting reveal here. If you like the video, please support me and like it and subscribe to my channel for more videos every week. Have a nice day!